right. Hello, everybody. Here I have another episode. And today I have with me Yuri Kissel. Hello, Yuri. How are you? Thank you so much for sitting down with me. Hey, no problem. I'm great. Uh, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Happy to be back in the pools, you know, dealing yeah, with this. Yeah, I know. It's, it's always kind of a little bit of a struggle at first, but definitely happy to be back and getting the shape. Yes, sir. You've had such a long career in swimming, man, at the top, which was in super admirable. Do you want to give us a little, like, so people or young kids who don't know you very well yet, like what, you know, the highlights of your career, you would say? Yeah, for sure. So I guess what kind of started off my whole career was my first national team, which was 2013 Junior Worlds. That was my first experience of actually going to Dubai. Uh, yeah, it was Dubai, which is yeah, also cool. an awesome experience. Mm -hmm. And just kind of like first real big experience of traveling and going somewhere new and like racing like the top dogs in the world and stuff like that. And ever since from there, I started making my senior national teams, Commonwealth Games was my first one, and then made every single national team up until Rio and from there into Tokyo. And I just kind of been at it for almost a decade now. So wow. it's pretty hard to believe. That's, and that's <laughs> a pretty, that's a pretty cool stat, man. Like you made every team since 2013 up until Tokyo. Yeah, yeah, so far. Wow. <laughs> wow. Good job, man. That's amazing. Thank you. You happy with that? You you feel like, you know, how do you feel about your career so far? Yeah, for sure. Happy with it. Definitely hungry for more and want to do more in it. But something I've kind of had to like kind of teach myself throughout my career is just being like happy and kind of taking a step back and looking at what I've accomplished and just like soaking it in and just being like, whoa, that's pretty cool, you know? Yeah. Whereas before when I was younger, I was like, I want more, I want more, I want more. And I'm not happy, I'm not satisfied. And that's a good way of being like hungry and like accomplishing stuff. But also it can be kind of like a negative in a sense where it's kind of depressing where you're just like never happy with yourself you know so yeah uh, it's, it's it's like it's like you gotta stay in control right like you gotta yeah. you gotta you gotta channel that energy it's good to stay hungry but it's also good to recognize when you've done something great right yeah exactly yeah and and uh you need a little bit of that in your, a lot of that in your career right so because uh, sure. it, it's it's a hard sport it's a hard yeah. career so yeah that's amazing to hear when you were an age grouper or a, a young uh, swimmer what did you think about the stage that you're in and how does it compare with what it actually is so like kind of like the dream versus the reality Reality. Yeah, I actually have a funny story about this. I remember when I was a little kid, I had like an Olympian. I was at UCSC in Calgary. So we had an Olympian training there on the pro team and it was Mike Brown. And oh, yeah. he would come and give us talks and stuff. And one thing I remember him saying was the bed situation in Olympics and stuff are, aren't the greatest. They're not very comfortable. <laughs> They're pretty small and stuff. And that hit me as weird. I was like, wait, what? Like, I thought you were like a star. Like you'd be in a lavish hotel kind of thing with like a big bed and just super comfy and stuff. And experience myself, I have to agree with him. It's not... <laughs> I get yeah. usually a sore back when I'm over there and uh, yeah. competing for a couple of days. So certain things like that were different, but the traveling, all these kind of things, meeting new people and stuff, things I thought would be kind of prevalent when you're going overseas so much and traveling to these big meets and stuff is definitely the case. And honestly, it's probably one of the best parts of this job, I guess, is getting to go across seas and see different cultures and stuff like that and experience different things. And also meeting different people from across the world and stuff and having friends all over the world and stuff is really cool. So yeah. these are a couple of things that I was hoping hoping would be the case and it actually was turned out yeah that's amazing so we get to see you guys enjoying like kind of like the you know the conclusion of all your efforts and you know we see you on tv and it looks all amazing and fun but i mean i'll let you speak to it a little bit more but it you, you definitely enjoy it but it's difficult very challenging yeah. and i think we don't we don't get to see those sweats and tears that you know i'm sure are there's lots of them yeah like training and swimming is very very tough and very very demanding a lot of time mm -hmm. put into it as well for if you think of the amount of time you train versus the amount of time you actually race and stuff it's pretty crazy yeah but it's like with training it's highs and lows i find you know like some days some weeks and stuff i'm just like i don't want to go to the pool i don't want to train hard all this stuff but then I reevaluate my goals and stuff of what I want to do. And that kind of pushes me on and keeps me going. There's other weeks and stuff. I'm just having a great old time, like doing great sets, like talking to my friends and stuff at the pool, having fun. Like I'm just enjoying and loving it, you know? So mm -hmm. One thing yeah. I've noticed throughout the career is waves, you know? It's waves, ups and downs, right? And and, and it's it's actually, that's a great point you brought there. Like it's, a, it's about defining success, not just as, you know, the outcome that it is your final time, but like what you're describing, right? It is success to find joy in these things and, you know, having teammates and having that support. And I guess, you know, feeling like you're, 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 you're able to operate in such an arduous environment, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it almost yeah. keeps you sane, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's well said. And okay, I'm going to speak for myself. When I was a little kid, I would look at that and, and think that I'm doing the hard work now. When I get there, it'll all be much easier. How, how... <laughs> 
<laughs> and I feel uh, like a lot of young swimmers feel that. How do, how do you, yeah. what would you say to that? Like, I don't want to deter people and stuff, no. you know, <laughs> like, uh, but honestly, I'd say it's the opposite. It's yeah. like your, your body starts wearing down and stuff. Like you start getting pains and aches and chronic injuries and stuff coming up as you get older. And as you've been working so hard, like swimming, for example, like so much shoulder use and stuff like every single day. And like, you yeah. think of that multiple times a day. 365 days a year, like 10 years, that's going to add up. Right. So like right. one thing I've noticed is up until I was 21, I remember I was like able to knock out practices every single time, just be killing and stuff. And like when I got dead tired, like I'd find a way to push on after I turned 21 and stuff, I've really like started to feel my age almost, you know, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Like years old and you're feeling your age that's like kind of ridiculous but it's kind of true <laughs> like i started to get chronic injuries and stuff coming up and like i wasn't able to train the way i was before and stuff and it was pretty crazy for sure it's just like it never the grind never ends you know and if you want to accomplish stuff in the sport and stuff that's how it's going to be but the reward from it is it's worth it you know well and i think the reason why i tend to ask those questions that's an amazing answer because sometimes people make the mistake that because you're talented things are going to be a little easier to you Mm -hmm. They don't realize that you are facing the most talented swimmers on the planet, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so exactly. um, we, we forget that it's the complete opposite, right? So I at least try to tell our swimmers that no, those guys, yes, there may be some talent involved, mm -hmm. but they also take care and nurture that talent mm -hmm. better than yeah. ever, than anybody, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and what I saw, you know, the, I've been lucky to have seen, you know, I used to watch you guys train at t Pask, and it's that attention to detail that really sets you apart from everybody else else um for sure so one thing i've always heard throughout my career is talent can only get you so far right so like if you're the most talented swimmer in the world and you don't do anything i guarantee to you you're not going to be the best in the world you know of course the guy that's like putting in the work and stuff he might have some talent for sure but he's definitely putting or he or she's putting in that work that's going to get them on top of that podium so right. it's a little bit of a call me call and be honestly more the hard work and call and be you know <laughs> so. yes yeah 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 no and so that's why you know as an age grouper we tend to try to instill those character traits so that mm -hmm. those routines and those habits and those skills in in hopes that you know if you have everything going for you when you make it it just comes a little easier right because it's not like yeah. that stuff is tedious right like it's it's always mm -hmm. doing it and it's and it you know eventually you understand that it, you need it to perform and to to be at your best mm -hmm. but it does take practice and it takes dedication to it right so i, I yeah, think it's sure. like that, that's kind of why i asked that yuri you said you know you know i don't want to make it sound too bad but i think that it's the reality of our sport it's a reality of, of sports in general and it's a great lesson right i think that you know everyone likes to dream and dream big but mm -hmm. nobody likes to pay the price or yeah very few people like to pay the price yeah and For usually sure. usually the, sure. right and usually the ones who do praise the price are where you are right so that's that's a, that's a, always a strong message for athletes that i want them to hear as much as possible for sure yeah yeah like what you're saying where you're like you're trying to instill that when you're younger and stuff like that pays off like my mm -hmm. dad's always instilled certain kind of mantras or things to think about when you're at the pool one of them being like you're there for let's say two hours anyways it's like might as well be working hard while you're there because you're yeah. there anyway right and that's why i always thought to myself even when i didn't enjoy swimming i didn't want to be there and stuff like when i got to the pool no matter what i'm working as hard as i can you know so and now it's easier and i it's almost like a switch that i can't turn off like now i go to practices every day i could be dead tired but i see a guy ahead of me i want to beat him still like no matter what i want to beat everyone in the pool at all times yeah. you know so, that's amazing yeah it's it still in your right it's in you now mm -hmm. yeah for sure. Uh, yeah you've talked about that before i think you've talked about that before with us that there was a period of time where you kind of didn't enjoy swimming that was when you were yeah. a teenager right yeah when i was in high school do, do you mind sharing a little bit of that yeah time sure. yeah yeah um well yeah i have a great story with this and i do remember telling it to you guys before mm -hmm. and stuff but uh it's an i, I just enjoy talking about it, i guess yeah. <laughs> so when i was in high school it, it makes sense i feel a lot of athletes are kind of like this you kind of get these pressures to like hang out with your friends at night and stuff like that you really want to kind of have this social life that you see all your friends really have in high school. And I felt that a lot. I wasn't enjoying the sport at the time and seeing that I kind of just really wanted to focus on school and just have a social life. So I told my parents like, Hey, I don't want to swim anymore. I'm sick of it. Like I want to quit. And at this time I was very, very much into video games. I love playing yeah. them and play them all hours of every day and stuff. And yeah. my parents were like, well, if you quit swimming, like you got to give up all the video games and stuff. And they thought they had me with that. That was their trump card. And I remember as soon as they told me that I went downstairs and plugged all my Xbox and stuff like that, went up to the room. Wow. 
You were yeah, serious, man. Oh, I was dead serious. Yeah, I wanted wow. out. And as soon as I did that, my parents were like kind of shocked. I don't think they thought I would do it. And uh, they were just like, uh, never mind. Like, you're, you're still swimming. Like, <laughs> you're not quitting. <laughs> put their foot down on me. And <laughs> to be That's honest, good. That's good. it was amazing. Like, I, I could not imagine my life right now without the sport of swimming. And I'm so, so thankful that my parents ended up like not like slouching and, or like pushing over and like letting me quit. And they put their foot down in this instance and they like, kept me in the sport because, like I said, like couldn't imagine my life without it and i right. feel a lot of people or athletes go through it where they quit too early and don't realize their full potential and that would happen to me i wasn't that great like i was pretty decent in high school but i wasn't making national teams and stuff like that to laugh right. you know so right i wouldn't have realized all this potential yeah 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 that's a good i mean that's a that's a really in-depth experience that you know we don't have a lot of time today but uh i i'm really interested about that stuff and because sometimes you do need people like that in your life that are kind of like putting their foot down and forcing you a little bit getting you out of your comfort zone and saying do this thing it, you may not be enjoying it but something good comes out of it exactly. um sometimes our parents are great people to do that yeah um, for sure and uh, so i'm glad that you were you're able to look back on that and kind of be happy and thankful to that because that yeah. you know we, we we do need that in our lives and in our in the, in the swimming career i i think if i could push every swimmer to finish their swimming at least to high school i would mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter how it goes if it goes up or down it doesn't matter how fast or slow you are i think that sooner or later something changes and you mm -hmm. find joy in what you're doing whether it's like you know just doing it for fitness or just doing it because you know you want to break 30 seconds in the 53 and that's mm -hmm. an accomplishable goal and you plan and you, you you set a goal you plan it for it you execute it and then you you get it done i mean the yeah. value in there is huge and uh last thing i want to say about this is like i always tell my swimmers that your swimming career is like a lifetime compress into 10 years mm -hmm. if you're lucky and the beauty of it is that athletes get to go through that very intense compressed lifetime in 10 years and get yeah. out of it with a lifetime of lessons right because yeah. you you know because the physical and emotional stress that we put swimmers through every day is comparable to like you know you don't go through that on a, on a regular day in your life yeah. unless you're a practice going 10 400s and you're crying because you don't want to do another one and you got you got five left right so you know so that that it's, it's a great topic i could talk all day about that stuff so yeah, for sure um, yeah like one thing is like i have a lot of friends that have retired now from swimming and i've mm -hmm. gone to the workforce and stuff like that and almost every single one of them has told me like if you just apply what you do or like have the same mindset that you have for swimming as into work and stuff like that or life life is easy after swimming like a lot of people are like complaining and stuff and all that but like compared to swimming like everything else is so much easier i could not agree i mean to this day and, and i i was only a national level swimmer but i I can, I can reference back to my swimming career i mean almost on a daily basis every mm -hmm. time i run into some sort of difficulty or challenge i it just it's like a flashback just triggers into my brain it's like you know like yeah you know, i've been here before i've been in worse before yeah. so it's, you know it helps me stay composed yeah and, and that's what's all about right like everything you're saying right now yuri right is about what you you pick up on during the journey right and and so i like how you guys speak about this stuff because it, it shows how much you value that mm -hmm. how much For you sure. value the journey right yeah mm -hmm. let's a little bit a little bit about some of the cool stuff i mean like i like we said said you've been to many worlds and two olympics now mm -hmm. what's your favorite memory <sighs> so many <It's> like <laughs> honestly like there's just so many that like you can't can't really narrow it down to one that you love the most what i would say is one of a memory that comes like is like pretty clear in my mind i always think about stuff was like making my first senior national team and i remember i went on the stage in camp and stuff and i was very, very i'm a shy person honestly like people don't know this about me i'm usually like, pretty like outgoing stuff people see it but like yeah honestly I'm quite a shy person and when i was like coming into this like field of like top dogs and cannons and stuff and i was new to it i barely spoke to anyone i like barely did anything and like hung out with the team and stuff I had one girl that was on my club team there and she was always like, are you okay? Like you're like tired or something like you're not talking stuff. And I remember one day I just made a joke and everyone just started laughing and stuff. I'm like, wow, I'm actually like <laughs> kind of killing it here, you know? And I start opening up and then everyone's like, what? Like, this is you? Like, this is strange. And stuff, the you know? real you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, were you just tired this whole time and stuff? I'm like, yeah, definitely. You know? But um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just like that kind of initial stage of being afraid and then opening up and like being myself and people really like liking that and stuff and like taking me in almost on the team and stuff like that was really, really cool experience for me and something I look fondly on. Well, that's, yeah, those are, again, uh, man, you're saying everything I, I, I wish you could say because <laughs> it's like, again, you're referring back. I mean, you you guys just came fourth at the Olympic Games um, yeah. with Brent 
and Josh and Marcus. Yeah. And your highlight is a memory where you actually opened up to the team, which is yeah, amazing. Like, it's amazing, right? Yeah. Like it's, I mean, I know, I know how important that really was to you guys because, you know, it was kind of like a comeback for the men's team, I think. It was a great yeah. moment, by the way. We like, I mean, I personally enjoyed it, man. I was at the edge of my seat the whole time. Um, sure. And then you guys made us proud. It was, it was amazing to watch. Thank um, you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but again, like I said, it's, it's, it's uh, interesting how you, your memory is that one. Um, yeah. And, and I think it's a powerful message to any young swimmer right now mm -hmm. of, 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 you know, finaling and being fourth in Olympic Games is an amazing feeling, I bet, I'm sure. For but sure. you're comparing that experience to something very personal that kind of like really changed you, right? Yeah, which for is, sure. Which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Those two kind of experiences, like accomplishing something so huge and like something like growing as a person, learning something about yourself and stuff, you experience that a lot through sport, I feel. And those are the kind of the two situations that really are prevalent in your life. And you kind yeah. of. Yeah. You know? It's it's almost like a moment when you when you when you really know that you became you grew right mm -hmm. you were yeah. like I, I you know it's, it's like a pivotal time in your life that changed you for the better right so mm -hmm. that's awesome that's a great story and yeah like do you mind talking a little bit about like the the past olympics i mean um mm -hmm. i have to say you know watching through tv you could really see the camaraderie in that men's team yeah. um i mean the girls team obviously uh, were great too but i i really see the bonding there is that how it was yuri yeah. So with that team, we're pretty bonded and stuff. Like me personally, Brent's probably the person I knew the least. And I'm still like pretty close with him. Even when he was done swimming at the time and stuff, we kept in contact quite a bit and we're talking quite a lot. And he was the person I knew the least. Like Marcus, I trained for with like six years or something like that before that. Josh, I was current, I'm currently training with and was currently training with at the time for the past like three or four years. So those guys are like my brothers, you know, they're my friends mm -hmm. and stuff. And like, I want to like do my best for them. And I have a very prevalent memory from that relay that was pretty cool to me. And Brent dove in, starts swimming, and me and Josh just look at each other. And it, like, it's kind of like this electricity that kind of happened yeah. between us, like almost in like training and stuff that we get. Where I could just tell from the look in his eyes that he's super excited. And he starts jumping up and down. And you can see the excitement. I start jumping up and down. I just get tingles throughout my whole oh, body. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps really right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and That's it was awesome. just such a cool cool experience and like yeah. we all did our best we all killed it and the results show for sure you know i think you had the fastest split didn't you like you were like 47 low yeah apparently i was like the third fastest split of all the teams in, oh uh, yeah yeah five. yeah yeah was, man you yeah, you flew that. there would you would you <laughs> yeah. Go, yeah like you're like an incredible relay guy eh? yeah it's like my cup of tea i guess yeah <laughs> like, eh? you, you, you just you uh, enjoy it eh? i love it it's kind of like speaks to the person i am i feel where i'm like i like to make other people People happy i like to do stuff for other people and when it comes to relays like a lot of my thoughts i want to make myself proud and do like a great split for myself but then always like when i'm dying on that last 15 meters i'm thinking about the team and i'm like well, i gotta yeah. touch like ahead of these guys i gotta do it for these guys like there's three guys there's a lot more people in the grand scheme of things that are like counting on me but there's these three guys standing me on the blocks that put in there all that are counting on me right now and i have to give it to them you know yeah again another powerful message there right like i mean in, in a sport that it seems to be very individual you know you still crave those moments and you know the connection is still there yeah and it's it's it, and you're always better too if you have that connection right for sure um, you know i i like to talk a little bit about so i just going into team you know i like to to emphasize that it's always better to put the teammate in front of the friendship i, I mean mm -hmm. especially when you're developing as mm -hmm. an age grouper because you know you're you're already in a, in a in a stage where all the guys that made it there kind of had their own paths and development and you guys are all on the same page and you know the olympic games right but as you're an age grouper sometimes you know your friend is not necessarily going to end up with you and your yeah. friend is not necessarily going to have the same goals you have they may not love swimming as much as you do right so i yeah. do i do try like friendships are great and i expect people to have friends of course but mm -hmm. sometimes i like to emphasize the camaraderie and just being a teammate mm -hmm. you know and, and coming together under one banner of or aligning yourself to the goals you have to the dedication you have the love for the sport right and and you know sometimes i like to point that out to athletes that you know it's nice to have friends and friends is of course you know but eventually your career takes off a different you know it's your ships get steer a different way sometimes right and for sure and, yeah. and you, you know you can't let that get in the way i guess right yeah for sure and like the one thing i've noticed too is when you do have those teammates with the same line goals and stuff and you're going through practices together and you're going through hell and back together you know it's like it brings a closer bond between each other like yes 
each other goes through like the the ringer together you know and that just mm -hmm. kind of builds a stronger bond and like more respect for each other and stuff and some of my best friends are like my teammates you know that had the same goal as me and stuff and like it's natural the same stuff together, you it's know? only natural yeah and i can see that I, I i can observe that when we have like you know people when they're the most vulnerable that's when mm -hmm. they become obviously more conscientious and more a little warmer to each other and you know when when we have big practices big sets you know they they, they come together better right yeah uh, so no yeah that's uh, an awesome story what did it mean to you guys to see brendan hayden come back <laughs> pretty cool like yeah. the guy is honestly i always thought he's one of the most underrated sprinters in the world and stuff and not anymore <laughs> something yeah exactly and that's saying something because he's a multi-gold individual medalist in the world bronze medalist at the olympics like list goes on the guy's got accolades for days and i still believe that he was an underrated sprinter mm -hmm. even then yeah and he's a guy I really looked up to as opposed like same with most of the sprinters in canada you know and having him come back was just super cool i remember before even i had his comeback i was at ubc training and stuff and we had an alumni meet and there's a couple alumni meets we had before this where he didn't show and stuff but then there's one he actually did show and i was so excited and we we're yeah. doing we're gonna race a 50 free and i was like i want to beat this guy so bad right now because like <laughs> that's so cool you know beat a legend yeah. right here yeah and like honestly obviously like i had um a lot going in my court like i was training the whole time and stuff i'm sure he wasn't training that much at this time but no 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 he still yeah. threw down a great 50 free and it was an awesome race and i never imagined he'd ever come out of retirement and come back to the sport and as soon as i did hear that i was just super stoked and the guy did so well too eh? Mm -hmm. like coming yeah. back after all those years and doing that well it's it's impressive, man. It, his legend just continues to grow. And, and he's, a, he's a strong leader too, eh? Like he's this real yeah, guy, eh? Yeah, like you can tell he's got a lot of experience in the sport and he's not afraid to kind of shed some light on what he's learned. Yeah, stuff too. yeah, I can and see that, yeah. I love. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, just even speaking on like his accolades and stuff, like he went a 47.99 on that relay and he's the oldest guy by five years now to break 48. Like, that's Which just is amazing. Cool. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> again... They keep pushing that barrier, eh? Like of yeah. of age and performance. So yeah, no, I think he fit really well with those, with you guys too, eh? Like <laughs> yeah, he works well with us. Like even his personality, like he's kind of a goofball, which I don't yeah. know if a lot of people know stuff. And like a lot of us are goofballs on the team too. So he like meshes really well with the team. Yeah, that's amazing. No, that's great. I guess I got. I only have one more question, and is a if you could do it all over again, Yuri, and mm -hmm. and specifically to an age group to the age group your age group years yeah what would you do differently you know and and i'm asked like anything specific to swimming a skill or a habit or anything like that that you think maybe would have made you a better swimmer yeah i have two answers for this one's kind of like a skill or a habit and one's kind of like a mindset the mindset one since i kind of spoke of it before is i kind of reassure myself like hey there's ups and downs to the sport you know there's going to be the highs and there's going to be lows and that's one thing that i struggled with when i was in high school i didn't realize i was just in a low and i just had to ride that low out until i got to those high moments and it's it makes it's all worth it you know so i kind of like reassure myself that because i remember just there was like months or weeks in swimming where i just despised it i didn't want to do it and stuff like that and i didn't think there was like any light at the end of the tunnel you know and so hearing that information i think would have helped me in that kind of situation the second thing is i would have grabbed myself as an age grouper shook myself in the hand like listen to me work on your underwaters <laughs> please work on your underwaters because <laughs> i'm I realized so much how much underwaters help you on the big stage, how much of a weapon they are. Like you'd yeah. be a mediocre swimmer and still be the best in the world with underwaters being just godly, you know? And I always found I was the opposite way around. Like I had awful underwaters, bad turns, bad starts, but my over top of the water speeds, some of the best in the world, you know? Yeah. So oh, yeah. it was always a little piece for me. And recently, like over the years, I've been trying like every so often to work on underwaters. Now, since this past ISL and those past short course worlds, I've just like been like hammering my underwaters, working so hard on them. And it is very, very tough. And if I had that kind of background as an age group swimmer, and I was a great underwaters and stuff, it'd just be so much easier. And I know it. So yeah, I would wow. just, just yeah, no, myself. Gr great, great choice of skill, man. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> the kind of speed you can reach underwater is, is higher than anything you'll do over the water. And if you're good at it, you definitely have an advantage, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so that's, it's amazing. I hope everyone's listening to that. I guess I have one more question. ISL, how does that, mm. how does ISL compare to your normal routine? Like, I mean, you're a guy that's been on top pre ISL and now with the ISL. How does yeah. that game, how did that change the game? Oh, it's amazing. I love it. ISL changes the game in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. The way I can compare ISL is kind of like, I'd assume like NC2As, but like what I've experienced, like eSports and CIs, it's like that, but just on steroids. It's like, oh, yeah. 
lights, music, like the best swimmers in the world and like just fast swimming and whether I'm racing in ISL and enjoying it, which I really do, or even just sitting back and watching, like the amount I've learned from ISL is just mind boggling. And yeah. it's just a great experience in racing. And it's also just one of those great experiences in traveling the world and gaining no new people stuff too. Like, especially because when you're on a team, you're on a team with not just Canadians or Americans, stuff like that. You're right. on a team with people from all around the world that have all types of training backgrounds and have different skills and things that they can really teach you. So I've learned a lot from just even talking to my teammates or seeing what they do and being like asking a question like, Hey, why do you do that? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I'll bring it back to the training program I have here and stuff. And it, I find right. it really, really helped my swimming. So I still has just been an awesome experience. I really hope it just keeps going, you know? Yeah, no, I, I hope so too. I mean, it's been a lot of fun. It's offering, it's, it's a very different, it's, you know, season with the ISL in there. It's really, I, I, I love racing. Like I love, mm -hmm just everything that racing brings to the table i yeah. love being a competitive person i love to win i love to win i love to compete more than anything right and i think it's just really you know challenged i mean i'm sure the coaches were involved i, I can only appreciate and imagine how challenging it would be to kind of plan for so much racing and so much but it really brought racing to another level and and i think that also it's it's just going to improve the sport because of it because you know yeah. swimmers are just going to be better at racing right they're racing yeah, all the time exactly. so, so yeah yeah that's awesome yuri thank you so much man this was a fun conversation and i hope to do it again sometime for sure yeah thank you for having me always a pleasure all right buddy see you later see you around